Hey, welcome back to Super Sons, where we help you navigate the multiverse of DC Comics. I'm Dan, and as always, I'm here with my brother Jake. Today we have a special guest, who's writing on series like The New Teen Titans, Crisis on Infinite Earths, and many, many more, has had a lasting influence on the industry as a whole. So, uh, with that, let us introduce the one and the only Marv Wolfman. Hi there. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? We're good. Uh, very exciting to have you with us. Yeah. Uh, it, it it sounded like a welcome distraction from doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's been a it's been a boring couple of weeks. Uh, try to give some people a little bit positive, something to listen to, and enjoy their time. Um, so. As you know, we may, we're actually pretty hard hitting journalists. So, Jake, um, if you want to take the first big question, yes, yes, of course. Um, what is your favorite sandwich? Oh gosh, it would have to be tuna melt. Any specific kind, or just like homemade? Um, I make it. I go get them from restaurants. We have an incredibly good panini shop within walking distance that makes a phenomenal one. So it doesn't matter where. It's just good tuna fish. Please, how could it go bad? Yeah, that is the. I think that's the first seafood related sandwich we've had on the show. So there's your first first. Yeah. How long do you think it took for you to develop your style, both artistically and literally? Um. I would say uh, the first couple of years, my uh, plotting was, was fairly decent, but my dialogue and my characterizations were not. As I studied more and more, I'd say about five years before I actually got it down and figured out exactly what I was doing. Uh, but it's an endless, it's an endless cycle. You keep, tr- you keep learning new things, you keep changing, you keep adapting. Uh, because times change and new talent comes in and styles change. But for the most part, my approach to writing took about five years to figure out. Hmm. And with, as you said, things do change. Do you think your style has changed with the with the time between all the different books you've done? I, I, I know for a fact that it has. Uh, part of it is back in the early Marvel days, uh, based on what Stan did and what uh, w- what seemed to be wanted, we wrote an awful lot of copy. If you look at those old early episodes of, uh, you know, uh, Dracula or Spider-Man or Fantastic Four or any of the other books that I wrote, there's a ton of dialogue in it. And, of course, when Stan wrote it, he had even more dialogue in it. These days, there's a lot less dialogue, but it has to, what's there still has to tell the whole story. Uh, or at least a written part of the story. So I've adapted with the times. I've seen what other writers do, where it's it's going, and I try to continuously adapt to what's coming out new now because the style of 1985 is not the style of 2002, you know, 2020. So with that, with the dialogue thing, um, as you said, you came up with a lot more dialogue. Do you prefer... As a writer, do you prefer to write more or less? I prefer, and this is going to sound like a, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know, you'll, you'll see. It, it pre- I prefer what works the best for the particular mm-hmm. style, for the particular book, for the particular story I'm doing. What, what it should be is no more and no less than what is needed. Uh, that's probably the, probably the best answer. <laughs> All right. So uh, what is your guilty pleasure? Uh, Fig Newtons and Vienna Fingers. Do you have a favorite flavor of Fig Newton? Fig Newtons. Just a regular one? Okay. So uh, I know you have created and co-created tons of different characters. Was there ever a character that you really wanted to make a bigger impact than they did? Not what they deserved or didn't, uh, but I always thought the character of the torpedo, who I did in Daredevil, was a better character than anyone cared. Uh, nobody seemed to really care about him, and I got rid of him fairly quickly, but I tried to prolong it as long as possible, and he just never clicked. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes a character that you don't know if they'll click does so well. Like, 
uh, when I did Black Cat, when I created Black Cat, I never, w I was not sure if the readers would take to it because Spider-Man had never had a, a female villain. Um, hmm. but of course, Black Cat took off. Yeah, yeah, I I would say so. Yeah, yeah, she's become fairly um, <laughs> um, big. Yeah, well, maybe one or two people know who that is. Um, yeah, I hope. <laughs> not like not like a, she's been in a big video game recently, but but the torpedo was a character I thought had a lot of potential, uh, but he just never clicked. I don't know why. Uh, when I did Bullseye, that character took off right away, and I'm not sure. None of us are sure why one character works and one character doesn't. Why fans or character a but not character b when they're not all that dissimilar so i'll i'll even go so far to ask you the opposite was there ever a character you thought would be kind of like a one-off that people loved so much that you just had to keep doing uh no i i've usually called the popular ones fairly well deathstroke or blade or um you know uh some of the secondary characters uh that i've done over the years and uh, they did take off. All right. Well, did I answer that? I, I'm not sure. I think I may have lost the thread halfway through it. No, I say you've answered it. Yeah, okay. absolutely. The torpedo. Hmm. Let's go back and read those issues. Yeah. Uh, you've written and edited so much, but if you had to draw one book, well, what would it be? Probably Superman. Uh, uh, he was the character that got me into comics that I loved uh, when I first uh, was a little kid and saw the TV show. Um, he's the character that I probably would like to draw. Uh, I started as an artist. I went. I was actually an, an art teacher in junior high school uh, in New York. Um, so I can draw, but I draw fairly badly. Back, even back then. Now now I draw horribly because I haven't practiced it in 40 years. Um, but Superman would be the character. Hmm. So, if you were ever trapped in an elevator, who is your ideal person to be stuck with? Real or fictional? Well, uh, since I'm assuming I shouldn't say my wife as number one. Uh, That's a good answer, though. In terms of comics... Uh, Again, Superman, because he's he he is a character that, to me at least, has the most depth, but it's never played up. No, uh, a lot of uh, writers don't know how to deal with him, and I love writing the character. And I would love to, if that character were real, he would be uh, fascinating to talk to. Yeah, so, Superman is interesting. It's an interesting choice because he is the most human person there he is. is. He's totally so. He was raised as a little kid in, a, you know, in Smallville, and he went up through the ranks. Uh, my Man and Superman graphic novel, which came out this year or last year rather, um, uh, is perhaps one of my favorite stories that I've ever done. Uh, and I really thought that uh, you can start to see the depth that Superman actually has. And do you think the those like humble beginnings are what gives him his depth, or is there something more interesting to you? I don't think he had humble beginnings. He had a loving family. He had he was uh, brought up by people who cared. Uh, he he was taught how to be a person, how to be a human being, long before he ever uh, his powers developed as as much as they did. So he was a pure and simple guy from Smallville, kid from Smallville who grew up and retained all the good parts of his family. Well, we got to see you uh, cameo on the big CW crisis. How was it being a part of that, of an adaption of something that you helped create? Uh, it was a little bit scary to start because I wasn't sure I'd remember all the lines. Uh, it's one of those things that I don't have a great uh, short-term memory. So um, uh, I wasn't sure I'd be able to do it, and it turned out I did. Uh, uh, it was fun. Uh, once I got into it, once I actually started, uh, it was a lot of fun. And 
just to follow up on that, you've the characters you've created, people always dress up as and go to conventions and all those types of things. Is it ever is it weird to you to see that like something you've helped co-create or create like in front of you, like living and breathing? Yeah, it's it's really wonderful to see it. I love it because it mean it means of something that I did connected with a fan. Somebody really loved the character enough to create that costume, to create the look, to make sure that they honored the original one because they, they chose to pick this. And if you have people who are taking what you've done and developing it from that point on and sort of immersing themselves in the characters, that's a great tribute to what we did. Is there ever a character that you get more excited about when you see maybe someone a little bit more obscure or things like that? The What I enjoy seeing the most is when a young girl, maybe six to nine or ten, dress up as Raven. Um, and they love the Raven character. Uh, and I see it at every convention. Uh, and I think that is so wonderful because those when you're that old, when you're that young, I should say, uh, and you want to dress up as a as a character that you love, you totally love that character, and that's just great. Oh, that's that's like that's really heartwarming actually to hear that, just because you get to see all those um, kids who dress up and things like that, and it's um, something we we love is like getting new people into the comic books. So seeing kids being able to find characters they love is always something uh, exactly. great to see. Yeah. Do you? Th- well, do you think the Teen Titans show helped influence that? Um, oh, of course, a hundred percent. These kids were not alive um, when when George and I uh, did the Titans. Uh, we did a very serious and much more adult version, and so they're taking the character from the cartoon show. Uh, but what happens is you have like Teen Titans Go, which is for the youngest audience. Then you have the old Teen Titans show, the cartoon show, and that's for a slightly older audience. You have the comic, which is even older, and now you even have an adult version on uh, that you can stream. So these characters can appeal to all different age groups, and I just love seeing the little kids get into it because if they get into these characters now, they'll be they'll be with, uh, getting comics and they'll be watching these type of shows forever uh, because they just love it. And I, it's a great, great thing to see. So, uh, have there ever been any storylines, such as romances or characters, that were left on the kind of cutting room floor that you wish had made it to audiences? Yeah, I, um, I wasn't left on the cutting room floor because I never wrote it, but I kept intending to write uh, the story that uh, the that explains the reason why Raven picked. Starfire and Cyborg to be part of her Titans. These are characters that nobody ever knew. And what led her to to them and what made her realize that they were necessary for her mission, which was to stop her father's uh, uh, coming to our world. Um, I, ha- I know the answer. I've always had the answer. And one day I would love to write it. I just never did while I was on the book and I was on it for 16 years, but it just never came up correctly. So that's that's the main story. And if I get a graphic novel to write someday and they say do a Titans graphic novel, uh, that's the story I would probably do. Hmm. That's interesting. I never I never really thought about that. We just actually covered the cyborg origin issue. And so I would love to see why those connections were made. So I really hope you do get that chance. That would be lovely. Um, are there any uh, certain characters that you still haven't gotten to write or one that you would love to tell another story with? Uh, yes, uh, I would love to do a Popeye story. Uh, it sounds strange, but, you know, I got a chance to do Daffy Duck and he's my favorite of the cartoon type characters. I've done Porky Pig. I've done all sorts of weird things, but I'd love to do Papa. I never got a chance to do it. Uh, in terms of DC characters as such, I would love to have written Dead Man and Adam Strange, but I never had a chance to. I kind of... Why Popeye? I, uh, I have again, these are things I loved as a kid. 
it's you can't explain it. I really liked uh, the Popeye uh, cartoon shows, uh, cartoons by the Fleischers. I thought they were great, and uh, it's one of the things that inspired me. So uh, as a kid, and um, you know, uh, created imagination and really helped because those were so well done. Oh, that's amazing. I'm thankful for Popeye then. Yeah, he's a good character. Yeah. And he teaches you to eat your vegetables, so nothing better than that. Was there ever a story that you worked on that you wish got more attention? Something that was, like, really special to you? Yeah, uh, I did a Titan story after George left just a couple months later called Shades of Grey. It was um, Changeling and Deathstroke. And I thought the story was really good, really solid. I thought it was a big surprise. And it just never got much attention. Uh, but I think it's one of the best issues of the Titans. Hmm. Is there something over your time in the industry that you've seen that you want to see more of? Like any positive trends that you like in comics? Well, one of the things that I think is so good today is I actually think we're in a new golden age. I think we're in the best golden age. We can now do stories for every age group. We can now do any type of stories. They don't have to be superheroes. They can be so many different things, and there's an audience for them. Some of the best-selling uh, comics right now are actually YA novels, and they're beautifully put together, and they're great because all these things are different, and they attract a completely different audience uh, and a different age group. and. Uh, it shows that comics can really appeal to all these other people who are just not interested in, say, the DC Marvel superhero stuff. Now, what DC's done is they've taken a lot of the characters. The very first one was Raven, and they turned it into a YA comic uh, in, a, in sort of a um, uh, book format, and it did so well. Uh, much better than the regular comics did, and I think there's an audience for that. And I'm so pleased that they're uh, that they're doing so many books for that audience. Did you get a chance to read that um, the the Raven one? I read it before it came out. Yeah, they sent it to me to uh, <laughs> go over and make. Uh, and if I had any notes, I'd give it, but I didn't have any, and I wouldn't give in anyway. Uh, it's somebody else's work, and I'm not going to tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. that's that's commendable um i know that that these young adult novels have found their audience and i think it as i totally agree with you that it's awesome to see dc pushing into these new frontier like actually trying to get books into different markets exactly uh, because all you want to do is give a kid a chance to find something they love and you want them to read so well hopefully this coronavirus is not will not kill any comic shops and will not kill any bookstores, but who knows how long it's going to last. Yeah. And uh, that's the fear that what comes down the line. And I, uh, I've been on Facebook suggesting that people do what I did, which is find your local comic shop, call them. I, I told them I want to buy a couple graphic novels. Uh, I don't know what they are. Uh, you know me well enough. Uh, find the stuff I like. I paid for them right then over the phone. And I said, you know, I'll pick them up in a couple of months, but you need cash right now. You have to pay the rent right now. So just send it to me at some point or uh, more likely just wait for me to pick it up at some point. But again, you need to pay the rent. So I think if everyone was uh, willing to help out their local comic shop, um, and maybe advance them some money for books to come out in the future, uh, they can weather the storm that's happen, happening to all of us right now. Yeah. And it's very, it's a scary thing because today Marvel gave one third of the line the pens down. So, and again, Marvel did what? They gave the pens down so people aren't writing books right now. So it's like one third of the line. Um, so they're kind of pausing. They're not doing any new books? They are, yeah, a third of the books. Wow. Uh, they're yeah. right, because there's no place to sell them. Yeah, and the digital thing didn't really go the way they thought it would. 
Um, Fiddle is still the answer, uh, or at least one of the answers, uh, mm -hmm. because it, you don't have to leave your house for it. And I think if this extends itself longer, people will do it because they have to. Yeah. yeah. And that, that will cause it to become more mainstream. Yeah. And yeah, I hope it I hope it clears up soon so we can go back to the shops, but anything to to help out like what you're doing is the best route. Just so they have people have to remember they have to pay the rent uh, like mm -hmm. everybody else. Uh, they were always hanging on by a uh, thread anyway. Uh, so um, the fans need to support their shops. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, it's a it's a rough time, but I've seen a lot of um, camaraderie out of this, and I've seen a lot of people trying to support each other, which is very good. That is uh, that's excellent. Yeah. So, uh, as you mentioned, you've been posting on Facebook, and we saw that you mentioned you were going to play the Spider-Man PS4 game. Did you get around to that? Uh, slowly. Um, <laughs> I play it until I can't uh, solve a problem, and then I stop for a day or two, then I come back to it. I'm still very early on in the game. Um, uh, of course, a couple of things that were fairly tricky, but I find if I stop doing it and come back two days later, I actually solve the problem right away. So, uh, yeah, the Spidey has a lot of, Spider-Man game has a lot of um, uh, puzzle type things more than just uh, uh, action. Mm -hmm. So, how does it? How does that feel to like play as a character that you've actually written and characters you've created are in the game? Oh yeah, the uh, DC game I forget the name at the moment had Cyborg and Starfire in it, uh, mm -hmm. and I played them both. Um, it's it's incredible fun. It's what I said earlier. The fact that these characters can go into video games, they can go into movies, they can go into all these other formats, just says that George and I did George and I did the correct job in creating them and building these characters to be interesting. And the fact that people will buy the games uh, because these characters are in it. Like I know uh, uh, Black Hat supposedly in the Spider-Man game and uh, um, I can't wait to play it. I can't wait to get to it because it's a great sign that we did a good job and these are characters that other people really love the way I loved so many comics as I was growing up. Hmm. Um, so what are you reading or enjoying today? Like TV, movie, comics? It doesn't even have to be comic related. Um, let's see. TV. Uh, well, right now there's almost nothing on it except the last couple of episodes of Prodigal Son. I like the evil. I like the good fight, which is on um, uh, C CBS, uh, the CBS app. Um, uh, there's so many shows right now. Again, we're in a golden age of TV shows that just some brilliant things. I just can't think of them all at the same time at, the, at this moment. Um, but there are tons of really good shows out there. Uh, I don't read a ton of comics, but uh, if my store recommends one, I will pick it up. Um, so, uh, but I'm not, again, I'm not just thinking of some of the game, uh, some of the comics at the moment. So, if you had to hand someone one DC comic, it can be your own, we won't judge, to help get them into comics, what would it be and why? Well, I thought about this question and realized that it's not an answerable question. The problem is what you have to do and why stores are so important and a good store manager is so important is you have to find out what, the, what that person likes, what they enjoy, because mm -hmm. these days... There are comics that will uh, that will let them connect to it. But if I don't know who the person is, I don't know what to recommend. Uh, they may hate the very thing I like. So you want to find out what they like, and a good manager will do that, and good uh, store clerks will do that. Find out what they like, and then recommend the best books to them. You have that's. So Jake and I have grown up with our store since we were kids and we still go there now. And like, we know everyone personally, so they know what we like. So I go there after months of not being there and they have like a stack of books. So like, you're going to love this stuff. And I always do. So I, I fully agree with that. So yeah, the, the, the owner has made it a very good point of keeping it, even though I, he doesn't 
get the chance to actually be in the store often because he's got four other stores to manage. And right. it, I had, it, been, it was a long time that he I, he went without even seeing me. But he already remembered. He was like, oh, yeah, uh, you're your favorite character is Nightwing, right? And then he went and introduced me to uh, Tom King. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. But I, I also will say Tom, just start. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. he's one. Of the, I think he's one of, if not the best currently working. I uh, I fully agree with that. We try not to be um, not try to play favorites, but I, his Batman is. Um, I think he tells different types of stories, and I love the way he writes relationships. Uh, the one that really got to me was the Vision, and I thought that was utterly brilliant. Oh yeah, it's a very different story. Like I was not expecting it going in, and I've been hooked on the Tom train since. Yeah, he's really good. He's also a nice guy. Um, All right. That means we can we can uh, add him at this because you talk, talked about him. Maybe <laughs> we can get him on. <laughs> um, all right. If you had to make a Rube Goldberg machine, what would it be its purpose and what would be the thing that sets it off? I don't know what would set it off, but something that would lock me to my desk so I actually do work instead of trying to play games to right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it, it's a productivity <laughs> machine. Point. So I, I, I try to look through as many interviews with you as I can because I didn't want to bore you. Um, and we know you've been interviewed a million times. Is there anything you always hope people ask you about, but they never do? Uh, craft. I really enjoy I, you know, do a writing seminar at Comic-Con. I do it. I've done it around the world, actually. Um, uh, and I really care about that uh talking about craft talking about how you put together stories and how you create characters in fact um comic-con just asked me uh, they're doing a whole bunch of things to reach out to uh fans and to people who may be interested in doing comics or or a hundred other things and they asked me if i would write a little piece for that on how to create characters and i uh i had a great time doing that i really enjoy talking about craft and how to how these things get put together. Uh, I have absolutely no problem talking about the comics themselves or, you know, uh, why I did certain things on Crisis on, or Superman or Titans or any of the other books I've done. But um, I enjoy talking about craft. Uh, what would be really good is having two or three writers uh, d uh, doing that together and everyone coming in with a slightly different approach to how they they write. Mm -hmm. So with that, I, I the idea of co-writing and things like that is a super interesting concept to me. I know that you and George worked very closely together for many, many years. Do you prefer to work with a team where it's kind of all collaborating, or do you prefer to write and then the other pieces come in later? Uh, when you're working with the correct person, not every artist is comfortable uh, doing uh writing uh, or thinking of uh, how, the, how the story is break, broken down. Uh, a lot of artists just want to get the script um, and then they do it and they do a phenomenal job, but, uh, but they don't want to have to think about what the story should be. On the other hand, you have someone like George or Gene Colan on Tomb of Dracula or, you know, um, Keith Pollard on Spider-Man and Fantastic Four with me. They enjoy being part of it. And I love that. I love the give and take because it allows both of us to come up with ideas and get the get the artist excited. Uh, you want the artist to really feel that they're part of it. And certainly with George, because he's all he's a tremendously good plotter on his own. He, he and I were able to put together the stories that made it better than either of us individually. So, um, yeah, that 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 would be it. Well, um, I, we do not have any more questions for you. Um, it's been an, an absolute honor to be able to talk to you. Uh, do you have anything coming out soon or anything that you uh, want to talk about? No, nothing coming out immediately. Uh, the last one was the Robin story. Um, I'm, working on, I'm working on other stuff, but uh, right now not for any of the companies. 
So it's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. Uh, where can people find you uh, online? Uh, Facebook and Twitter, Mark Wolfman. Um, both of them will take you to my um, Facebook page or my Twitter feed. Thank you for coming on. Uh, you can catch Jake and I in, again in two weeks. The same bad time, same bad channel.